Hello everyone, we're getting ready to do a new video comparing food from Chick-fil-A and McDonald's. We have the Roll Master with me. We got Lich. Apparently, when the Roll Master said he wanted nothing on his chicken sandwich, they took it literally. Can show I say it. <laughs> show it show it to them? This is this is they took it literally. It's just a chicken patty. That's all it is. Chicken patty. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even give him a bun. They didn't give him nothing. Just a chicken patty. <laughs> I've never been to a restaurant that's like my order so seriously. I thank you. But next time, could I have a bun, please? <laughs> I don't think I've been to quite that far. <laughs> like, like, I didn't walk into a Chick-fil-A for a chicken on a plate. At least I didn't, don't think I did. Meow. Fuzzy master, of course, meow. Say hello to everyone. Reminds me of the time meow. I went to KFC at a bowl, a chicken meow. bowl. Meow. Meow. Except that thing was awesome. It was a legitimate fried chicken bowl. Mm -hmm. It had like potatoes and all that good stuff in it. But yeah. the bowl was made out of freaking fried chicken. <laughs> we'll be right back once we actually get everything set up. Trey's going to be joining us. I just we just had to show this lovely little moment to everybody. The fact that Chick Fil A decided that when we said nothing on the chicken sandwich, they took that to mean we just wanted chicken patty. <laughs> I still said chicken sandwich, didn't I? It says chicken sandwich on it. I don't know. <laughs> so remember, everyone, lesson learned. You go to Chick-fil-A, be very specific on how you order everything, because they will give it to you. Mmm. <laughs>
much better. Mm. Not bad. Not bad at all. Training? Potato? Sure. What? There we go. What you said, did I want one? Yeah. Try it. We have a lot of food, and it's not like we can sit there and eat the whole bunch. By ourselves, I mean. Mm-hmm. I'll give it a 2.9. I'd say a 3 is good there. A glorious... Straight 3? A yeah. glorious 7. So is it zero to five, man? What? Zero to five. A glorious five. Fry's opinion is this waffle pie or fry is the greatest thing on earth. I also just like fries in general. Sure. Remember, this waffle fry is going against the king of fast food fries. The McDonald's French fry. Trey, it is now your turn. Mm. Again, burgers, and uh, soup, and under for a What's in the con- plastic container? That's a chicken patty. That was supposed to be his sandwich. Oh. Do you want some Texas toast for that? Hey, I'll eat it straight out. I'll eat it straight out. Hey, we Dude. can split it. Parts of this bag are still warm. You might want to heat that up, though. Yeah. So if I'm out of frame, it's because I'm leaning back here, so that okay. these guys get the guess, spot. Uh, right. Quote Pulp Fiction, quarter pound of cheese. There's two of those in here. Here's the quarter pounder. Oh, it's a bacon quarter, quarter pound. Oh, it's the bacon quarter pounder. Yeah. So uh, I have one, and then there's one over there. So that's just the regular cheese one. They're testing uh the quarter pounder with bacon. Split it, everyone. May I have a knife, please? Terry, what's your hands? Knife acquired. We are not barbarians here. Good God. Yeah, I noticed that with the buns. Those buns are... Are you really surprised? Because what that tells me is that these buns are stale. Well, well, they're also Dustin. not warm either. Yeah, Dustin can't eat these, so I Good guess you God. can have one this of those. Is <coughs> what? Oh, <there's coughs> on it. This will probably be interesting just because bacon. Mm. There are a lot. It's of really hard to fuck up bacon. I'm. Yeah, I, I was about to say there's no difference between a bacon one and one without bacon. Bacon makes everything better, though. Oh, I didn't know they tasted sweet. Sometimes bacon can't save everything, you know. Like this bag from becoming a grease stain. I am on the verge of full. I'll give it a three. Are you on the verge of full? I'll give this a three point. Remember, I have been sick and I'm not been able to eat my usual disturbing voluminous amounts of food for several days. Maybe a two point nine. A bit a bit more a bit too much cheese. Though the cheese might actually save the pen. Mm. That's definitely a three and a half. Probably a four when it's actually hot. Uh, two? 2.5? One of those is warm, like at the very bottom, it's super hot still. And I think I that's mean, a chick fil A thing. I mean, honestly, that's I'm not even hungry, chicken. so. Oh, uh, pull it out. Oh, we get, we get to the bottom, and somehow we got, we got to make a DLT from the 80s. <laughs> I'm just about that up, enough kids. grease. I, my stomach can't <laughs> intake that much grease. You know, you know what I mean, right? Where now this is, isn't grease. That is Ew. a spicy chicken sandwich. That does not look like chicken. 
No, it looks like chicken. Will you partake in the chicken with me, brother? I guess. I feel like that should have been more beautiful than it actually sounded. You do not know how to fucking. <laughs> You know, if it would make it easier, you could just tear apart that piece of chicken patty right over there. It's the same kind of sandwich. Oh, that's why. What does that simply tear chicken apart? Yeah, you can't tear it that far, unfortunately. Jeez, look. Look at that. <laughs> it's pure fucking grease. Get enough of that, you could slide out of anywhere. No, seriously, that's that how a dude failed. Like, that's how a dude broke out of like a Japanese prison. And then over Detroit. What? What the hell is you doing? I saw your hat. It. Like, God, you massacred me. That tastes that awful. Did, yeah, that's that. Chick Fil A. Super even like, overrated. Even wiping my hands, it's like still stuck in there. Like it feels like almost like it's turning into a glue. Ugh. Ugh. That was terrible. Uh-huh. You heard it here, everyone. And that's Despite it. the chicken sandwich, their main proponents, the one thing that everyone wants from them, success! <laughs> <laughs> Ones <laughs> all around. No, that's a zero. It's that a, is zero. There's a oh. weird, I don't know if it's the sauce. It, it that wasn't used, even but, oh. spicy or was, crispy. Did it at least taste like chicken? I mean, it not did. really. <laughs> it tasted like paste. Chicken That's paste? a palate it, cleanser. It, even the even the pickles tasted more like just straight up cucumbers. I think pickles. I got, I I think like, I got like a piece of onion. Chick Fil A. Whoever is working there, if you are watching this. Up your game. You've lost four customers. We're never going back there. Yeah. There, there's only been like maybe one item off the two items on Chick-fil-A's list that I ever go back for. And one's a... Uh, They're nuggets? I might go nuggets, back yeah. I might go back to the chicken strip if it's hot. Yeah. The chicken strips, the nuggets, and they have like a Colby Shack. I like I would go chicken or something. The waffle fries aren't bad. Yeah, the yeah. waffle fries aren't bad. They got no legs. Those are the only things that I usually get. But I'm not going to go to a restaurant for fries. <laughs> yeah. That or I mean, the drinks and desserts are good. That's about honestly it. So it's Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. I would go to Dairy Queen for their ice cream. I don't go there for the food. Yep. Dairy That's what I'm making the point. Man. Oh, is God. That Dairy Queen so it's my turn. Is terrible. That with everything that's not a dessert tastes awful. Yeah. Like, I still taste the, like, shitty salt. I'm still trying to figure out how the hell they fit an entire I'm, hamburger. We're going for the nuggets, go. people. We're going for... Something that I've loved since my childhood. The McNuggets. Here, let me warm that up a little bit. Yeah, warm these up. 30 seconds in the mic. <laughs> you probably could get away with 20. Maybe. I mean, if I'm going to say anything, is that Burger King needs to work on its nuggets. Yeah, they do. But it also depends on which nuggets you actually get. They're spicy nuggets. Really good. Actually spicy. Is that an item that Burger King has that Walmart doesn't have? I don't think they have. I don't think McDonald's had spicy nuggets. Yeah. I thought that that McDonald's and chicken strips, they didn't have it there. I mean, McDonald's does have chicken strips, but, you know, no one really ever goes to get chicken strips. 
because. So I spent pretty much 80 bucks in food that was pretty much going to throw away. <laughs> Learn from us people. There's such a thing as too much adventure. But candy coated cockroaches. No. Yeah. Cockroaches are very disgusting creatures. Cockroaches have a lot of protein in them. Yeah, well, it's kind of, uh, I had it a couple of times. I think it was, they have like the weird bug items in Asia and in South America that I've tried. You can order them too. Like, I would never they're, order They're pretty, they're not bad. I would never, I'm sorry, I would never order bugs. Yeah. Like, to, like through a drive, like through a Dino Dash? No, not through a Dino Dash, no. It has to be good. Yeah, can food. I get a bucket of crickets? Like, it has to be a home cooked food, you know? <laughs> As everybody's discussing bug. We we're talking about overly ambitious, uh, uh, or you can't, you actually can be overly cautious when it comes to food. Mm. I would say, like, the candy coat of cockroach. The thing where you, the thing where you beat a monkey to death and eat its brains? No. no. That is a real dish. That's what was the inspiration for what we saw in Indiana Jones. Yeah. That's a little kind of like rubber. That's a little too adventurous, isn't it? It tastes kind of like rubber, but you know what else I can taste? Breading, breading, slight bit of seasoning. The chicken is not good at all. But compared to everything else I eat, I'll eat this. Mm -hmm. They were not. They didn't feel as if they were tenderly kissed by Ronald McDonald himself. Trying. What? Try it. Try it. Uh, I'll give this a three. What the hell are these shapes? How about you guys? It's supposed to be a yeah. chicken? I mean, I'll give it two. I would rather much prefer these ones. They're effective. Chicken nuggets. Hey, I insist. Take them. I don't want them. It's not a pleasant experience. See, here's the thing. I think they actually have favor compared to the chicken Chick fil A nuggets. I can definitely taste more out of this. Yeah. So, I like or, is mush. so what do you give it? Especially considering the price. I mean, for the chicken nuggets of Chick Fil A, you're talking five dollars for that. <laughs> you're talking about ten piece is like two, five for twenty. No, that's a bit much than that. For ten, I think it's like five bucks. No, for uh, for twenty, it's five. Yeah. For ten, it's two. Well, technically. So, Trey, what do you think? One. So. <coughs> McDonald's chicken nuggets. Ow, 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 ow. Got a three, a three, a two, and a one for a combined score of eight. No, we have to divide that by four. So, a two. No, no. I was saying combined. So let's say that the four of us all together, we all give it five, so it's a 20. All right. So eight divided by four. Yeah, there would be a two. But I was going for a combined score. And even if we're going to do that, it... so it'll be, it would be three, three, two. So six, seven, eight, eight nine. nine. Nine out of twenty people. Yeah. It's High still. score still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your taste is still not mouth. I don't like it. It's your turn. 
mouth first aid. It's literally what I'm drinking. Except mine's cold. Maybe the fries will taste better. You might want to nuke those first. I'm going to be leaving this till Trey to edit. <laughs> Wait, what? What'd you say? I said Trey shall be the edit master. Uh, Matt, you haven't seen my edit yet. You've been purposefully avoiding watching my Sonic edit. Mm. We can all enjoy the first one from after we get out of here. <laughs> uh, I feel like my mind is like melting from the pure grease. Hey, <laughs> give our man a shot of whiskey. Just bring me the dragon. Just bring the bottle. <laughs> bring us the whiskey. Bacardi Dragonberry. Oh, fucked up. Bacardi. <laughs> you have a problem with Bacardi? Just give me the fucking bottle. <laughs> I'm gonna be drinking those too. Well, I don't want something that's fucking not actually been washed. It just had water in it. Really? Try it. Try it. <laughs> chug, 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 chug. I'll, I'll get the fucking moonshine. You wouldn't. He I would. Here <laughs> 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 at Isaac and Friends, always encourage people to drink responsibly. Listen, I've had this before. This You can just straight up drink, drink it. Normally. I know what I said, but fuck it. <laughs> it's my booze. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm not really into fruit flavored booze, man. <gasps> Flavor? Man, wait, there's flavored booze? Yeah, that's what they're drinking. If you can see his face, folks. <laughs> the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I do not know that they're flavored. <laughs> well, I thought they're. I, I knew How they were like. How can I not like it? It's easy. I don't like it. I mean, I knew there were like talking fruity about him. drink mixes. I just didn't know that you could get the booze part of that that already has fruit flavor in it. Or that the usual nasty taste of liquor was just the was fruit flavor. Is that, that flavored, flavored vodka? Bacardi? No, it's a form of rum. I mean, I have a fucking ton of vodka. Oh, keep me away from that. I can't handle any more than a couple of sips. <laughs> What, of rum? No, vodka. A majority of the vodka I have is still shit that my sister got me. Vodka? You mean, you mean magic, you mean the magic potion from Russia? Yes, the magic potion of Russia. From Russia. No. Oh, I never had, I never, Zero. I've it's never, fucking terrible. It's bland, there's no salt, nothing. Oh wow, he's right. They didn't even put the, salt on these. He's supposed to be the king of all fast food fries. This is supposed to be the saltiest fucking thing you get. I thought, I thought Arby's... To be fair. fair. I can taste potato. Yeah, 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 that's it. To be fair, we Not also got this at either. the McDonald's right next to where I work. Um, they were understaffed. Little, they were understaffed where I saw like four people there total. Oh, and God. we dropped a giant order on them. Oh, like sixty some like dollars that. worth. But yeah, it is bland. That is straight potato. It's straight starch. It's, and to put salt. this in reference for everyone, I'm Scots Irish on my mother's side. He's Irish on his family's side. We don't know what I am. If we're saying that's too much potato, <laughs> it's bad. That's like saying that I that it's too boiled for me. <laughs> I don't know. I can't get it. Just, just heating it up, all that. Grease. Oh, I found the salt. 
Yeah, it's probably somewhere at the bottom. Meaning they didn't salt those very well at all. No, I actually have had something that was really overboiled. It's a potato, actually. <laughs> it was overboiled beef stew. And this guy, uh. I don't know, have any, uh. Tell me if you've ever been to Tom's Bar. I don't know what Tom's Bar is. So. It's like a bar and grill, but on, uh. But on Chesapeake Bay. Hmm. And, uh. Guy, and I, I went in there, and I asked for the daily special, right? The guy gives me this, gives me beef stew, boiled beef stew, which is usually good. You can't go wrong with beef stew, right? Mm-hmm. The guy had boiled everything, and I mean, when I say boiled, I mean like... He turned it to mush? The beef was like was good. It was tender, like it went through a crock pot. Mm-hmm. But the carrots, you took one bite and it was like eating really, really finely steamed carrots with the beef with the beef stock, but it was the potato. Massive, there's like massive pieces of potato hadn't even been peeled all the way through. Like there was still some skin there, which which is usually not too bad. You know, you get some. With right, with the right, uh, but like right seasoning, it's really good, especially in mashed potatoes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but like this is like a, this is like a stew potatoes, you know, like uh, chunks. Mm-hmm. If you ever have like you know, like beef stew. Yeah. Now imagine all of these textures, but you could not taste a thing. Like you couldn't even taste the broth. The guy had boiled it to the point that he had overboiled the seasonings. Oh. And me, British man, is saying, too boiled. Huh. <laughs> I think it was even, uh, I think it would even, I, I think it even got like a 10 minute mention on, uh, oh God, uh, one of those, uh, one of the programs on uh, late night, uh, late night, uh, Television? Mm. I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't really watch a whole lot of cable TV, even when I'm home, but. Uh, did you just eat that entire fry? No. Yes, yes, you did. Actually, no. He ate half. That's <laughs> good. Uh, no, he ate. He left, like, maybe a, not even a third there. I tried to, but I just couldn't stand it. <coughs> Sorry. So, let's get. put this to a point. Are we, I zero. are we continuing this? Or uh, are we are we just giving up and saying, fuck both of them? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm at, at this point, it's... Maybe it's just the flat-out Crestview McDonald's and Chick-fil-A that is a possibility here because in our small town where we live, the nickname of our little small town, Crestview, the place where businesses come to die. I don't know. Chick-fil-A is thriving here. But it thrives everywhere. <laughs> Except, I'm not really sure. I, I, I don't think I've ever found a Chick-fil-A in London. I might be wrong about that. I've just never seen one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't exactly go into the markets and other buildings too often. I'm still a hermit, even when I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's like how you can't find a Taco Bell in Mexico. You never get a franchise there. I think you can't get a franchise, in, uh, any franchise in Mexico because the cartels will kick you out. Hmm. You can't pay the bribes and make a profit there. Hmm. Well, maybe you can. McDonald's seems to do just fine. McDonald's can thrive anywhere. 
I though, still I still good. love the teriyaki chicken sandwiches from McDonald's. Which I only found in Japan. Well, the McRibs are not too bad. So now we're going to start talking about, of course, from the looks of it, things that we do like. Uh, for everybody at home who has not been introduced yet, this is our friend, the Roll Master. International is, traveler and businessman at your service. He and, likes to... And very scary. Um, when I had a PS Day PlayStation, he used to allow us to borrow some of his games to play on the channel. Uh, who knows? We might pick one up again eventually, but for now, we're just dealing with Xbox. I call I call the, the Medieval remake Reserve and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Eyes of Heaven. Those games now? Those were actual games. It is cheaper to get the PS4 JoJo game than to buy the PS3 JoJo game for some reason. You're the only one of us who could afford the Godzilla game. Most Godzilla games suck ass. Now this one was actually really cool. It just didn't sell well. It's got my boy Jet Jaguar in it. The hero of Singular Point. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't he know. He is the mightiest nerd of all the nerds in this room, apparently. But Remember. It some movies, I guess. Uh, for context, Beta Ray Bill is Orange Th Horse Thor of the Godzilla franchise. When it comes to movies, See, comics... when it comes to Gomorrah, I, like, watch maybe the first couple of films... And maybe some of the spinoffs. Yeah. I yeah. love Ultraman vs. Gomorrah. Did anyone yeah. ever see that? Is yeah. Gomorrah different from Gamera? No, Gomorrah and Godzilla are the same character. Oh, slightly. Oh, is he there's like a, the there's one? There's not really much like, of a difference. Is he the one that looks like Godzilla, but he's wearing like a corn costume, like a big corn shuck? No. <laughs> We're still alive, you know that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is, oh, you know, so Rollmaster is also our anime nerd of, of anime nerds. I'm still far outpaced by everyone else. <laughs> Especially you, hentai dude. <laughs> I think that's an actual YouTube channel. Hey, if you're watching this, Kyle... Love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt we'll have any of the big YouTubers watching us. If we do, we love you, Joe Vargas. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley commented down below on one of his most recent um, reviews on a Alliance of Darkness for D and D. Isn't that the game that's like so bad? He almost gave it the same uh, legendary status of uh, Mindjack. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because the enemies literally didn't do anything. I literally commented down below. I was thinking of trying to thank you for saving me because <laughs> it's free on Game Pass. So I was thinking, but you know what else is free maybe on it was free. But after I saw it on his review, I literally said, "Not even free will I pay." Like, like pay how pay. easy it would be to get the achievements. Uh, you know what is free on Game Pass and actually fun. There's a game that's free and uh, uh, called Funny Face. Katamari Damasi, where you roll up stuff. You know what you're talking about? Yes. You guys are making it, me feel like a hipster again. <laughs> it originally came out in the Nintendo 64. Basically, the Space King destroys the whole galaxy, so now you are this little green guy that has to roll things to remake the stars. I haven't and played it. it. By the, the, you, game by the I end, actually, you the make game I the played, mood. The game, the game I, I finished uh, yesterday on uh, Game Pass, Full Throttle Remastered. That is a classic right there. <laughs> you were, uh, do you like a... There are very few... Point and click adventure games, but point and click adventure games made by Lucas Arts were fun, yeah. especially Grim Fandango. Oh, I uh, love Grim Sam Fandango. and Matt. Mm -hmm. I, Isaac, I have Grim Fandango remastered on my Steam account. If you ever want to play that, you can play. Believe free. it or not, that's also free on Game Pass too. Yeah, yeah, it is. And EA Pass. 
And I actually have that for my Xbox. Psychonauts 2 isn't out yet, and that's on Game Pass. Well, so it's Age of Empires 4, which I'm definitely going to be looking forward to. That's you know what's actually kind of weird for me? Why is, uh, you know, the original, like, the free pass to your Fable is free on Game Pass. Why isn't Fable 2 and 3 also on there? Actually, it is, like, such act. Why does Fable 2 and 3 is yeah. on Game Pass? Yes. What, what I, I want to know is... First, I've not really seen the anniversary edition. Why would I've you, actually seen all three. When you want to buy it... Fable Anniversary is more expensive than Fable 2 and 3. That's true. Which, to be fair, I've played all three. Well, not the first one. I've played the second and the third. Everybody hated the third one. I thought it was okay. But I will agree that the second one was definitely a better game. I have no opinion on the third one because I never finished it. The third one was kind of... The ending part was kind of... Like, I got right to the point where you become king and then... I was making decisions, I just gave up because like at that point I was sort of done. Yeah, just, that's like, the end of the game. You're I just, just making buy decisions. I that I had a son who was such a dickhead. Isn't there supposed to be like in game? Plus, I'm pretty sure I killed my wife with Fable 2, so where did these camps come from? Well, here's the thing, Trey. Believe it or not, the whole story of Fable 3 is the only reason your brother was being a dickhead was because he was trying to stop this great evil force from entering into your kingdom. So he did the only thing that he believed he could do to actually raise an army to fight it. So legit he, good cause, not horribly misguided like Deus and the Seven Demigods Gods and Azura's Wrath. Yeah. No, he's more like Palpatine. You know, expanded universe, Palpatine was supposedly building the army to fight the Ezo Gloves. Oh, to fight that even bigger threat? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Ah, uh, Palpatine. But for narrative purposes, it's easier to just say he did it because he did it. Except Disney got rid of, I think, isn't Disney just got rid of Yuuzhan Voss now? Well, the Yuuzhan Voss were part of Legends, so they already got rid of them. Are they going to bring him back? Probably not. Dave, I, I'm just sort of waiting we'll, for Dave. We'll have to see what Dave Filoni does. He brought Thrawn back, and he also canonized, re-canonized Thrawn. Uh, I said, true. Did you seriously want me to edit this? Yeah. Good. I'm not going to take this clip out of context or anything. You do. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... <coughs> no, I mean... So, th- that's going to be one of those awesome things where it's going to be good to see where he goes with that. Because I am huge Star Trek and Star Wars fan. They went from food review to podcast. Yeah. Let's just go to podcast. Why not Beth? Where are the podcast people? Yeah. But, uh, but if we're going to do a podcast, here's a good question for everybody. Anybody else feel like everyone's whining a little too much about Bezos and Musk going into space? Some concerns are warranted, but many of the other ones are not. Who would go into space if they have the money? I would, I'm with you on that. I would love to go into space. Yeah, well... But, like, we're nerds. We grew up on Star Trek and Star Wars. I grew up thinking I was going to get my own starship and fly with Han Solo. Come on. Who was with me on that? I I can't see myself being a Starfleet officer because that would be so boring. (laughs) It is. Well, I saw myself being like the captain of the ship in Starfleet. Everyone thinks they're going to be the captain. How many people actually realize that they're probably the janitor? (laughs) I think Lower Decks answered that question. (laughs) But to be fair, if you look at lower decks, I mean, they get up to some hijinks, too. Like the instance that created the dog. <laughs> that could... Well, yeah, the three of uh, the four of us, we would be the <coughs> average guys. We would be background characters at best. At worst, Trey's the Red Shirt. <laughs> <laughs> we're all the bridge crew and Trey's the Red Shirt. No, we're the replacements of the bridge crew. <laughs> no, no, even worse. I'm a red. I'm I'm a red shirt of sex tuplets that we all joined at the same time. So it keeps freaking people out how I keep dying. <laughs> kind of like a no, no, not like that. I was thinking of that movie. Uh, where did Monday go? Mm-hmm. Where did Monday go? It's a it's a movie. Uh, I think that's what it's called. It sounds abstract. It's really not. It's actually really stupid when you really think about it. Yeah. But you can say that about almost anything. 
everything. But, uh, no. Yes or no? Tomb Raider is getting a remake. Again. Game or movie? Depends on how they do it. Um, I will say this. The Would first... you give Crystal Dynamics another chance? Especially with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, for those of you who don't know, and if you're done watching this video, I encourage you to check this out. We do have a playlist of it. Put the clip in. Oh, God. Put the clip in. <laughs> do, you mean, you, do you mean the one from the very end of the game? Yes. The greatest glitch quote of all time. The greatest quote of the lich. We did an entire Let's Play through of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The game was okay. The story itself, though, was absolute a trash fire that should really needs a flamethrower to be put. Well, away. that and, and I think that's in comparison story. to the Lara Croft that we had in the first two games, which I I personally loved the first two games. Not gonna lie, I liked the first two games. That third one, though. Yeah, but isn't your major complaint the MacGuffin of the entire game? It's not even the MacGuffin. It, it's also the entire way that it's played. How would you have done it? Like, everyone has the complaint. No one ever answers, how would you have done it differently? Well, it's here's the same the... storyline. Because the storyline of the end of the world, that's been done a whole lot of times. So I'm not saying that that can't be done with some random artifact. I'm just saying, well, regardless here's... of how it happens, how would you have done it? Okay, see, here's the thing, right? My major complaint at the very beginning of the story is the fact that Laura Croft, who has encountered... Numerous artifacts, who has dealt with numerous different magical things, looks at a giant wall that says, if you take this, all of this will happen. No second thoughts, no compunction of going... Did she take it after she was riled they were shooting like rockets at her, though? No. Mm -hmm. Well, the helicopter blew the hole through the wall and the guys came down. No, you're thinking of the second game. That's when that story came up. And the third game, she gets into this room by herself. They can't even get in yet. She sees this massive mural of death, destruction, and doom as she takes this, this dagger. Full well seeing this, full well being aware, too, of artifacts that can do some really bad crap. You know, after dealing with a literal, in the first game, dealing with the literal Japanese empress that could pass her soul on to her descendants. There you go. And I think that I think she actually succeeded somewhat in the comics with her other. Himiko, but... Yeah. And then you had the second game. And then in the third game, it's like all of her previous experience just goes... Poof! Grab dagger causes massive, massive destruction and death. All the proof, Daddy was right. Well, I can't like to give it the context that it deserves. You know, he was right the entire time, and even she dismissed him. No, it's, it's, I think it's a massive amount of guilt. It could be. No, I think you once said, well, the other guys would have taken it, except for the fact that in the third one, Trinity is literally being led by a native for whom this legend belongs to. Okay, I actually I actually have the opinion that he's actually not the real leader. He seems to be more of a, uh, another puppet. He does not seem like the kind of guy that Trinity would really trust with this. No, he actually was the leader in the game. The problem was, because even he in the game literally sits there and goes, you actually took it. It is bad when the villain looks at you and goes, you're you, dumb. You, <laughs> you took this thing and you knew that you needed this other artifact for the, everything to be safe. Because it shows that he, because the whole time the main villain actually shows that he cares about the people. Really? seems to be loving killing them. No, that's... That's the other two. That's Captain Rourke or whatever his name that's under him, technically. 
Uh, so, basically, she causes this whole earthquake, doesn't try to help the people at all, but she's just destroyed their home, their home because her actions literally, in the third game, destroy an entire city. Literally all of Cosmo. Don't, I don't, but think about it like this. All Tomb Raider ruins and cities end up getting destroyed by Andrew. Yeah, but usually there's It's not. by Trinity, not a direct action from Laura Croft. And usually it's empty. Yeah, this is... I think my major complaints about 3 is kind of the same complaint I had with 2 in a weird way. The ending is the exact same scenario down to what we saw from the Oni in the first one. Like, I don't. I, what is this whole <coughs> immortal concept where we have a small army, so they're always going to have immortal bodyguards? You have the Oni, you have the Byzantine guards from the second one, and you have the weird undead things underground in the pyramids. They actually weren't undead. What they were was actually another tribe that was related to the regular tribe that was actually living in the lost city. Yeah, well. Which. Okay, sure. We... The circumstances might be different, so they're not immortal warriors, but still, like... Well, there's also... Awesome. I could spell a valid point that the third, the end game of the final game is... Like, the company even said that this was their final trilogy, so the ending we got is almost part and parcel of the past two ones. To an extent. Well, there's also the thing, too, that in this case, the villains, his main thing wasn't even that bad. He just wanted to protect his hidden city. Because I... he knew that if the modern world was allowed to get into it, they would destroy their entire way of life and culture. Not to mention, if you look at it and think about it in terms of just, you know, what we know from tribes that have been cut off from people, yeah, modern people going into that city would cause disease and death. And I guarantee you, since it was supposed to be in the middle of Peru, the Peruvian government, government was not going to just Leave that city be. Yeah, but what if Laura Croft and what's his name also do the same thing? No, they are foreigners who would bring disease and death. Well, technically, Trinity had been there for a while. So, doesn't that kind of get rid of your main point? To an extent, but it still would have brought destruction to their to their culture. It would have brought. Because let's be fair, modern civilizations tend to take advantage of pretty much anything they can get their hands on. I think you just described humanity in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I see your point. I don't know. I uh, I uh, really enjoyed the game. I'll give you the story. But and like I said, gameplay was awesome. Yeah, but. I don't think up until the first Tomb Raider game, really, I actually played Tomb Raider for the plot. You know what I mean? Right. But, um... So, I'm not playing down hurting the game too much. I'm just saying it could have done with a better story. I mean, the villain... Yeah, I can see going with a sympathetic villain type, but if you're... I think they moved way too far into uh, Assassin's Creed 3 beginning, story-wise. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's it's annoying. What annoys me is it's more along the lines of when your supposed hero becomes worse than the bad guy. Yeah, that's not pre rogue anyone. Mm hmm. Well, that's because the hero literally became the bad guy. <laughs> because the good guys are even worse. Mm. Well, don't get me that. Come on. They were legitimately being like, hey, hey, hey. Let's destroy whatever we did to Haiti. Let's do it again. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't think I don't. I actually don't care too much about Rogue. I think it's one of the worst written Assassin's Creed games out there. Yes, I said that. Sue me. Well, maybe I will. Ubisoft calling Mr. Rollmaster. We'd like to sue you for calling our game shit. <laughs> 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 but uh yeah i know that like people love it but i honestly thought that the game was actually 
really, really overdone. Like the Templars are were really aren't so bad after all. Great. Can you write it so like the assassins are competent? Mm-hmm. Like that was my main problem. It's like I don't care about who's good and evil. The conflict pretty much says that neither one is. Uh, but mm-hmm. like when you're <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you're with me, right? The assassins, yeah. the assassins, the colonial assassins were written to be dumbasses. Like, it wasn't even, like, great, uh, like... I don't know. Yeah, it's still recording. What? Bro, session, 48 minutes. <laughs> How long do you want to do this? I don't care. Okay. That's more that. That's more I have to edit, and I don't believe in cutting footage down. Good for you. Good for you. in the film industry yet. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he'll bring claymation. I don't know. I've actually never played Rogue, so you're not really missing much. Yeah. I actually, I'm kind of the minority. I thought Unity was actually way more fun to play than Rogue. Well, I think what really bombed Unity was its launch. I'm sorry, when you launch a game and all you have is teeth and eyeballs. Yeah, but they do that all the time. <laughs> no. Unity I was, was... I was I was there. I got it on day one. I know what it looked like. My copy wasn't nearly as bad as other copies were. I don't know what it was, but mine worked fine. Well, let me... It was, this. It's the same experience. I had a terrible experience with Cyberpunk 2077. You didn't have most of the problems I had with it. That is true. The worst I had when I first played it was when I, I was had all the bugs when we got to the seventy seven. There was somebody T posing in one of the booths. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a generic. I wish thing. I'd actually recorded this because I got this amazing thing where for some reason my car was still there and the city was still there. But for some reason, my guy had disintegrated to the point where the only thing that was driving was a pair of gloves and some eyeballs. And so I'm just imagining Night City being like, just driving along. It's like, oh yeah, that's just another day in Night City. Gloves and eyeballs driving a car. (laughs) (laughs) It's me. Are we actually going to get a sequel to that game? I mean, it didn't. I mean, it sold pretty good, but it got really terrible critical reception. I mean, we're supposed to be getting DLC for it, which is supposed Free to bring DLC, back yeah. Which they've been saying is actually not going to be what we think it is, and it's also been delayed multiple times, so that's yeah. definitely not a good sign. Well, so is freaking Vampire the Masquerade 2. So. Yeah. Uh oh, here yeah. comes the Vampire the Masquerade whining. Hey, we're both fans. You didn't even play the original. Okay, you played some of the original, but you didn't care for it. That's true. I did. I guess I liked Swarta, Sortor more. Knights of the Old Republic. Yes. That by the Masquerade is actually fun. I mean, I have literally the 5th edition book over there. I don't actually. I'm actually hopeful with the whole redesign. Like, maybe with these pushbacks. I, I do believe some of the pushback might be due to this whole COVID thing. Uh, but uh, I just hope that when this pushback, it's going to be the good pushback, you know, uh, not like Cyberpunk 2077. Right. Hopefully. Well, that, that game got multiple pushbacks and still came out on this. So I'm just hoping, like, I'm at the point where, yeah, like, I, I'm okay with some of the updates, like some of the day one patches. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. As long as it's, like, functioning. You know what here's, I mean? Here's one game I'm not waiting for. The Dead Space remake. Yeah. My opinion of that is in the same level. I was like, is this going to be, like, a, is it going to be, like, a Resident Evil 2 remake or Resident Evil 3? No, they're rebuilding it up from the ground. Yeah. That's what I meant. Res- you can't say that Resident Evil 2 remake is the same game. Resident Evil 3 is even worse. The original game. Mm-hmm. It just it has a nice paint job. The gameplay is yeah. gameplay sucked. Yeah. I, I don't, yeah, I mean it, it really did. The boss fights weren't interesting. They really, really I don't know why. I mean with modern technology, why do we make the world 
of Raccoon City even smaller. Like, look what they did with Midgar <coughs> Final Fantasy VII Remake. And they couldn't do that with Resident Evil 3. Like, do, like, like, right? Come on, you're with me. Yeah. Midgar and Final Fantasy VII is way smaller than it is in the remake. Get the balloon on what it's worth. I mean, it's, it, the city's gorgeous. I love looking at the trash. <laughs> I love looking at the shit. That's, some, that's the, some beautiful trash there. That's the most beautiful <laughs> trash I've ever seen. I mean, go on, who's with me? Like, like, that's some gorgeous trash you just want to take out on the date. I mean, the shanty town of Sector 8 looks great. I know that sounds terrible, but it does. And that's when we get to the whole... Uh, is it actually is it Sector 7 or Sector 8? Is Sector 8 the one with Aaron? Or is that a different Sector? I think Sector 8 was the one with Aaron, because we did see her in the first cutscene. That was in the, that was in the upper city, though. Upper ring, what do you call it? Anyway, that's my, that's, that's my point. I mean, with all these AAA studios, I'm kind of the opinion that, like, unlike indie developers, with all of the marketing, all of the research programmers, like they had the best in the fields, I feel like they have no excuse to fail to the extent that they do sometimes. <coughs> like, like those big blockbuster films where they have all the resources, everything. And yet we seem to just give it a pass. Like, oh, it's a big blockbuster with billions of dollars. It failed. Oh well. Back to the drawing board. When any studio fails, though, it gets shit on. I mean, we shit on the major studios too. But what's what? But I, I feel like we should give more of a leeway to independent studios. They're mm -hmm. making really smaller games on really smaller budgets. I feel like, like. Oh, absolutely, I agree. Like you have these massive studios and the games when they come out like. Barely functioning, there is no excuse. No excuse at all. Well, the excuse would be corporate, which brings to mind Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu's statement of how the sovereign should not be over controlling of his military. In this case, you know, the, the sovereign shouldn't be, the CEO needs to not be over controlling of his workforce. And let them. I think the massive problem with many of these studios is that they're run by people who don't know anything about what they're doing. Not true. Like, say what you will about EA. <coughs> which, what can't you say about EA these days? But, uh, at least back in, like, the 90s, I'm not really sure about this, but back in the 90s, EA seemed to be, like, a great studio, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, back then they also released their Harry Potter I, I don't games. Believe, I, don't, I, I can believe that it contributed somewhat, but I can't believe that internet and DLC really pushed EA to what it is now. I, it can't be the sole contributing factor. That makes no sense. Well, what really pushed EA to what it was now is the loot boxes, let's be honest. Yeah, but something had to trigger it first. You don't, you don't, something had to have happened. You don't just go from, like, this to that in a snap. There had to be a... I feel like there should have been some clue to it. I mean, there really wasn't. It was mostly just like a, how a lot of... Like, did DLC... Re, like, did uh, pay DLC and the ability to do patches really just make everyone lazy? Just like that? Like, yeah. Yes and no, because it literally made it to where... People didn't really have to put in their top A game effort because at first, yeah, nobody would be willing to excuse that. But once we started getting the 29, 2010s, yeah, people just, you know, got lazier and lazier because why put out a working product when you can just patch it later? Yeah, I'm. I just, I just can't, I, I'm just, it's, it's, it's so bizarre, right? 
It's so bizarre to see a company go from the nineties. Like what's it's like it's like a it's like a what's the like blizzard. blizzard yeah, blizzard's blizzard. fall is just oof. It's just weird. It comes out of left fucking field. It used to be I, I mean did the acquire did partnering up with Activision really change it that much? Yeah, because Blizzard wasn't the one merely making the headshots. But I can't believe that it's the only thing that was really there. But then you also had the problem where most of the people that had started out with Blizzard had all left. Yeah. So, yeah. once they had all gone... Yeah, are they running their own studios now? I think so, yeah. Because I think uh, BioWare is definitely within a different studio. Uh, I don't remember its name. But I think they're forming their own studio. I know the Oddworld guy eventually got the IP back. That's how he's able to do new and paste. Uh, at least Kojima got his own studio. I, I mean, is Kojima the one behind Judgment? Kojima is behind Metal Gear Solid. In general. Yeah. Well, I mean, like he did Death Stranding, but I'm just like, I don't know. I was, uh, I. The Stranding Walking Simulator. It's not that bad. It's not as great as some people are saying it is. It's not as bad as other people are putting it out either. I feel that, like just like how the original Metal Gear spoke to a certain audience, Death Stranding will do the same thing. I think uh, I think uh, Metal Gear Solid is only as popular as it is because of just how uh. powerful the internet is anymore. Don't forget that you can literally find out who the big bad villain is just by delivering a pizza. That is a literal part of the game. Which one? Death Stranding. Say what you will. I still, I'm just saying, it's, it's going to appeal to a, it's, it's got one of those, uh, it appeals to a crowd. It's not going to appeal to everyone. I feel like it's like, a, like from software games, or Persona. Persona, Three and four had a pretty tight knit community. Like the people who liked it liked it, but yeah. as soon as like Persona Five hit the market, and like everyone had watched so many popular YouTubers talk about these great games, mm -hmm. they all had to get their hands on it. But I'm kind of like, how many of them actually finished the game? Like Atlas sales hasn't <laughs> shot up astronomically since uh, Persona Five. Yeah. Which is a sad thing because I'm a big fan of Atlas. Yeah, Atlas. Oh, I love Atlas Studios. Uh, but yeah, they, they haven't really gotten, like, Persona 5 made a shit ton of money. Yeah. Everything else has come out since. It hasn't reached that same demographic. Well, I mean, it's like they always say that you can't, that sometimes lightning just doesn't strike twice, and every sequel after does tend to get worse. But Atlas Gate, no, we're just talking about like just other Atlas games. Like, what was the what was the one that came out uh, after Persona Five? Oh, uh, that was uh, R. No, no, it was a hack and slasher that they came out with. Didn't Atlas work on Everblue? Actually, I think they did. Yeah, you know the diving game. I wouldn't say Atlas works in it. They're a they're a they're a publisher. publisher. Yeah. For the states, but I'm just saying, like, uh, yeah, we can't play that on the channel. That's a PS2 game. Like, uh, I was saying, you can tell who are real Atlas fans and who are just there for the fan. I'm just wondering how many people who are who play Persona Five that didn't know about Persona beforehand actually stuck with it, and how many dropped it after they realized, oh, this is not like Final Fantasy, like. That seems to be a lot of experience I've seen <laughs> with, like with uh, other JRPG players. Like if it's not like uh like if it doesn't play like Final Fantasy or Tales, they'll drop it like yesterday's lunch. Yeah. <coughs> I would love to find a Final Fantasy player who's only played Final Fantasy and then get them to play uh Cyber Devil's Lever. Yeah. <laughs> and just or Trails of Cold Steel. Or how about this one? How about this one? This is a great one. How many real RPG players 
play uh, Atelier. Yeah. Atelier. I'm still kind of... Oh, I think my favorite of that one was... My first one, actually, was... The... I'm kind of confused on Atelier's RPG status, though. It's more of like a simulator kind of thing. Yeah, it's, like, multi- it's like it's an RPG. Games. It's RPG in the same way that like uh, Animal Crossing is an RPG. I mean, it's still an RPG, but I mean, it's it's so loose to be an RPG. It's more like a crafting game. It's like Minecraft, but with alchemy and cute girls, which is enough to sell, I think. But still, nah. <laughs> hey, hey, Dead or Alive is still making bank. In- how many people actually play that for the volleyball? Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I play this game for the volleyball. <laughs> no, you play it for the modded versions of the volleyball where everybody's naked. You, you, you don't get the... According you, to uh, some people. You, you don't get what we're trying to say. I know, jiggle physics. Oh, it's so much more than that. Uh, but, uh, so much more, but, you know. I don't play Dead or Alive, but... I understand. Oh, the actual fighting game, <laughs> not the volleyball spinoff game. I understand why people play it. I know it's not both. I know it's not volleyball because yeah. those yeah. people are definitely not thinking that the tennis game. So I'm just no. saying. <laughs> well, here's the, the tennis game. Here's the funny part. Believe it or not, that actually partly saved the video game industry was a Japanese man going, "Let's link the booba to the controller." And the player can make a bounce and shift. Seriously? Yes. Prove it. Some commenter is going to be out there and saying that you are totally full of shit. So I want some real proof mm-hmm. there. <laughs> I want to see that quote. Not right now. Of Let course me not. Can... Of course not right now. I'm just saying. There's going to be a commenter just calling you out on that. <laughs> <laughs> there always are. <laughs> that the video game industry was said by Jiggle Physics? On one hand, honestly, it doesn't surprise me. Sex sells. <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, I kind of don't want to believe it just for the sheer, like, how cliche that would actually be. <laughs> I mean, look, wait, if we're really going to solve anything, all we got to look for more than that is Bayonetta. Dude, that is true. Dude, if sex could save the Middle East, I feel like maybe the greatest way to uh, to get uh, to uh, save the Middle East is just to get them all the fuck. <laughs> well, they do that enough. I'm just like, that would be a... What if, like, what if we, like, just got them all hyped up on weed and just got them the fuck? It saved all of these industries. It could save Saudi Arabia. <laughs> oh no, they're beheading people even more. Oh no. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Obviously, that's not a real solution, but I would like play it out. So actually. Mm-hmm. I mean, hey. Now all I'm picturing is Operation Hotbox and just America just drowning all of Saudi Arabia in weed fumes. <laughs> Think another plane behind it that drops bacon. Uh-huh. You know, it probably wouldn't work considering the fact that uh, we just seem to originate from the Middle East in some fashion. But still, uh, <laughs> totally, we've got it way off topic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now all I'm thinking is a bunch of high Saudi Arabian guys going. But, hey, hey, how did we get here? Just remember, food? just remember, Al Tahir was high every single time he killed the Templar. Just saying. Uh. Oh, yeah, he, I mean, he was smoking. Get, he was smoking some shit. What do you think that white smoke was after the after the jumps after the time jump? I mean, yeah, <laughs> he had to be high considering he would jump off giant buildings into hay barrels and just get up and be like, "I'm fine." Yeah, it's a flesh wound. <laughs> it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> oh. But uh, have you guys actually played uh, media? At all? What? I know it's a weird jump, but uh, that I, I I don't know. Do you play media? That new game out there? Not really new, but like I haven't played. I just seen the cover for it, but it looked kind of interesting. Never heard about it, but I've not seen anything about it. I might have heard about it, but I don't know. I haven't. I don't remember. Okay, what about the Talos Project? 
That I have played. Yeah. <coughs> now, 30 not there. Is it too smart for its own good, or is it just right? Like, does it, does it like, is it so smart that it kills itself off its own parts, or is it, like, uh, actually, you know, intelligent? You know what I'm trying to say? There is just so much imagery on the whole uh, AI god reference kind of thing that I'm just like, I can't tell if the writers knew what they were talking about or just were so full of themselves. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, are you trying to say from a scale from Rick and Morty to actual how things are made? I don't know. I mean, it's literally a, a game about an artificial intelligence fighting God and rejecting it in a weird way. What? I think it's the Talos project that I'm talking about. I might be talking about a different game, but like. Okay, you must be talking about a different game than I've played. Because you play as an artificial intelligence, right? You have to solve like a bunch of puzzles because God is talking to you. I, this sounds like Numia. I think it is Numia. This is the one we're thinking of. Maybe? I don't know. Similar game, different storylines, I guess. Well, you guys should check it out. It's on Game Pass, though, I think. It's, it's really good. Hmm. I mean, play it. I have tell me what out. you think. Because I can't, I can't, I for one can't think if it's too smart or that it just jumps back to being stupid or that if it's actually intelligent. Hmm. So, who knows? But, uh. Almost as good as, like, a. I think the guys really actually, not really guys, but like, I think people really overanalyze games these days to a certain extent. I mean, to a degree, yeah. And although, to be fair, when it comes to art, you know, the artists sometimes do put in intentions in. But as Sidman Freud once said, sometimes the kick is just a kick. Join us next week when me and Josh figure some bullshit to talk about for six hours. <laughs> but Isaac plays Final Fantasy. <laughs> hey, to be fair, in my Breckenridge, the director spent 12 hours, I think actually 16 hours, trying to get the perfect shot of a cake. <laughs> That's a real movie. All right. Did he get the perfect shot? What? Did he get the perfect shot in the end? I don't know. I never saw the movie. <laughs> I need to. It sounds insane. It sounds boring. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you next time. Stay safe. And if you haven't already, like, subscribe, and comment down below for more content like this.